Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith and out of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Baby, uh, can you uh, go in there and grab me some water? There's a little bit of water. I forgot to get water before we start. I mean, a little bit of water. Not too much. A little bit of water. Not free water. Let's open up to, uh, let's do, uh, what you want to do? I don't know. Um, let's open up to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 5. Give me verse 12. This is Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. For when, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. He said, man, it's about time that y'all be teachers. But instead, y'all have need for somebody to come back and teach you the basics when it comes to the Most High God. Keep going. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Mm -hmm. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. Mm -hmm. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Mm-hmm. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of the Messiah, let's go, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. Repentance from dead works, that's a, that's a basic, right? That's a basic when it comes to the faith, all right? It's something else to go with that. And the faith towards God. Right? When you're talking about repentance, turning from, turning from sin, and putting your faith towards God, that's basic, right? It's valuable. I'm not saying it to diminish it. It's basic, though, right? That's a basic principle. He says... He says, not laying again the foundations of repentance from dead work and faith towards God. The foundation is the bottom. That's, that's how you start. Right? So that's basic. That's elementary. Right? So we're looking at it. He said, repentance from work, uh, dead works and faith towards God. What else? Of the doctrine of baptisms. We talking about baptism. That's basic. That's, that's elementary. Right? Keep going. Of laying on of hands. Laying on the hands. Basic. Praying. Basic. And of resurrection of the dead. Resurrection of the dead. Basic. These people ain't even caught on to that yet. They talk about dying and going straight to heaven. So they ain't even got the basics yet. Right? These other ones they'll talk about. Right? You go in these churches, that's all you hear is a lot of the basic stuff. The elementary stuff. Right? If you elementary, that means you only you ain't fit for strong meat. Only milk. He's saying it's time for us to move past that. Keep going. What's the last one? And of eternal judgment. Mm -hmm. And this we do. And this will we do if God permit. Right? So that's what we try to do. We try to go through the basics and at the same time we want to lay more on top of those foundations and build up. Right? And if the most high God permit, that's what we'll do. Right? So last week we left off, we talked about Moses setting up the, uh, the tabernacle. Let's see if we can get it again. This is uh, Exodus chapter 40, verse 16. Exodus chapter 40, verse 16. This 
This is Exodus chapter 40, verse 16. Exodus chapter 40, verse 16. Thus did Moses, according to all that the Lord commanded him, so did he. Right? And it came to pass on the first month in the second Four. year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. Mm-hmm. And Moses reared up the tabernacle and fastened his and fastened his sockets and set up the boards thereof and put it in the bars thereof. And reared up the, his pillars, and he spread abroad the tent over the tabernacle, and put the covering of the tent above upon it, as the Lord commanded Moses. Right. So he built, put it all together, and then he put the tent over it. He put the covering over it. That's all the tabernacle was. It was a frame, and then you put you put uh, these big blankets, pretty much what we consider blankets now. You put these big blankets over it, so it just covered it. It was a big old tent. Right? And that was our tabernacle. That's where the Most High God would made his temporary dwelling place. All right? Keep going. And he took and put the testimony into the ark and set the staves on the ark and put the mercy seat above upon the ark. And he brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the covering and covered the ark of the testimony as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the table in the tent of the congregation upon the, upon the side of the tabernacle northward without the veil. And he set the bread in order upon it before the Lord, as the Lord had commanded Moses. And he put the candlestick in the tent of the congregation over against the table on the side, on the side of the tabernacle southward. And he lighted the lamps before the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he put the golden altar in the tent of the congregation before the veil. And he burnt sweet incense thereon, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set up the hanging at the door of the tabernacle, and he put the altar of burnt offering by the door of the tabernacle, of the tent of the congregation and offered upon it the burnt offering and the meat offering as the Lord commanded Moses. And he set the laver between the tent of the congregation and the altar and put water there to wash withal. Mm -hmm. And Moses and Aaron and his sons washed their hands and their feet thereat. When they went into the tent of the congregation and when they came near unto the altar, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. And he reared up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Then a Moses cloud, did what now? Moses finished the work. Moses finished the work, right? Moses finished the work. Notice how long it took. Grab, uh, grab six, verse 16 for me again. Notice how long it took for all this to get done. Thus did Moses according to all that the Lord commanded him, so did he. And it came to pass in the first month, in the second year. In the, the first, first day month, month, in the second year, Right? Remember, we started this off, and when we started this off in Exodus chapter uh, 12, the Most High God told us this would be the beginning of years for you, right? And he called the name of the month Abib, all right? So at that point, that was the first month of the first year. Now, we fast forward, we get to the second month, or what was the first month? First month the first the month of the second year. So this is a year later. A whole year. We went through the wilderness. Or, well, we're still in the wilderness. But we went through the wilderness. We went to Mount Sinai. We heard the Most High God speak. We sat with Moses. Uh, Moses was up there 40 days, 40 nights. Went back up there again. Another 40 days, 40 nights. And from that time, we've been building the tabernacle. Then we finally got it done. A year later, exactly one year later, right? And Moses, he's the one who put the finishing touches on the book. Say Moses finished the work, right? We talked about last last week how uh, how that was representative and that testifies of Yahushua, right? Who hung on the cross and said it is finished, right? Who said I will be the first and the last. You see Moses, he reared it up, verse sixteen or verse seventeen, to tell you he reared it up. Then after that, it says he finished the work. Right? So now that the tabernacle is built, it's all put together, everything looking nice. Alright? What is the tabernacle for for us? Alright? That was something that that's where the most high God dwelt. Alright, we had the mercy seat in there. 
And uh, the book is going to tell us, and we'll learn, we'll end up reading it, that we spoke with him between the cherubim. All right, so this is, this. is all this is where the Most High God dwelt for us. It's also where our altar was, right? So that means sacrifices, all that type of stuff. So now, if we remember, we talked about all the stuff that the priests would make. That was part of the things that, that uh, had to be designed, all right? So let's look at, let's look at, uh, the priests and to kind of look at how, how uh, the priest gets set up. So we'll have to jump over into Leviticus chapter 8. Because remember, Leviticus is going to bring us into the sacrifices and going to break the sacrifices down. But before we break all those sacrifices down, we got to know who's going to be doing the sacrificing, which we already know is Aaron. All right, Aaron and his sons. But we got to be able to break that down and see it in the book. So we're going to go through that first and then we'll break down the sacrifices. This is uh, Leviticus chapter 8. We're going to go to Leviticus chapter 8, verse 1. It's Leviticus chapter 8, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take Aaron and his sons with him in the garments, and the anointing oil, and a bullock for the sin offering, and two rams, and a basket of unleavened bread. And gather thou all the congregation together unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord did it in the and Moses did as the Lord commanded him, and the assembly was gathered together unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Uh -huh. And Moses said unto the congregation, This is the thing which the Lord commanded to be done. And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. Mm -hmm. And he put upon him the coat and girded him with the girdle mm -hmm. and clothed him with the robe and put the ephod upon him. All right, he clothed him with the robe. But after that, he put the ephod on him. Watch this. And he girded him with the curious girdle of the ephod and bound it unto him therewith. Mm -hmm. And he put the breastplate upon him and he also put in the breastplate the urn and the thumb him. All right, so he put the breastplate on, then he put the armament and the thumb on. Him. We'll talk about that too, and figure out what that is, right? But he put the breastplate on him. Right? We talked, we talked a little bit about these things, showed the picture a little bit. People online didn't get to see it, but um, y'all can Google it and kind of look at it. You know, a couple of sketches of what these people will say it looked like. Don't trust everything you see though. But you know what I'm saying? We uh, we we looked at those things and kind of described them. Remember, he got the roll. Remember, the 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 priest had the colorful roll. In fact. Um, the color of it was, was, uh, like a, a scarlet purple, hey. right? Hey. Keep going. And he put the miter upon his head, also upon the miter, even upon his forefront. And did he put the golden, the golden plate, the holy crown as the Lord commanded Moses. And Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was therein and sanctified them. And he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times and anointed the altar and his vessels, both the laver and his foot, to no, sanctify no, I think him. I missed it. That's around with this boy. Go back. Give me verse uh, what, what, and seven. He, and he put the miter upon his head. He put the what on his head? The miter upon his head. He put a miter on his head. So he had a robe put on him, got the breastplate put on him, and put the miter on him. Right? So this is what Moses was doing. Moses was setting him up. The Most High God is established. And you remember back in Exodus... We talked about when, when we were building all the designs and kind of getting the designs from God, we talked about all the stuff that, the, that Aaron and his sons would wear. So he started putting it on. And at that time, the Most High God already chose Aaron to be the one to carry out his sacrifices and to represent him. All right? So Aaron already knew that this was coming, but Moses has to actually, he has to actually put it in play. He has to start setting them up. So he's dressing them. Right? Nobody else can dress them. It got to be Moses. Right, so he's dressing them, he's getting them dressed, making sure he look all right, putting it according to the way the Most High God wants. Right, because Moses was going to be the high priest. That's no different from our high priest today. Grab uh, Matthew chapter uh, 27. This is Matthew chapter 27. I'm going to shoot through this. It's Matthew chapter 27, verse 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Yahushua into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. 
Mm-hmm. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. They put on him what? A scarlet robe. They put a robe on him. Just like Moses had to put a robe on uh, on uh, Aaron. All right, let's see what else they put on him. And when they had plated a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head. They made a, a crown of thorns and they put it on him. Just like, just like Aaron had to get a, a miter put on type of his head. Matter of fact, if you go back, it'll tell you it was like a crown. Right? We look at these things and we see it all testifies of the Messiah. Watch what they did after they did that. In a reed in his right hand. Mm -hmm. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Y'all may not remember, but guess what Aaron had when he was walking around in, in, in Egypt? He had to carry the rod. Right? The rod that Moses had, a lot of us think that Moses had it. Aaron had to carry it. Remember, he had the mouthpiece. Most High God told him he, he would be the mouthpiece. Same thing as Yahushua. All right? Yahushua had to have a reed in his hand. Then they, had, then they messed around and bowed on to him. And they, in their mind, they was mocking him. All right? They had no idea that it's fulfilling prophecy. They had no idea that they were lining up with the book by doing that. In their mind, they thought, they were like, oh, let's make fun of this guy real quick. They had no idea they was lining up with the book. All right? That's why it's important for us to know what we do and know what, what the Most High God is about. Because whether we're ignorant or not, the Most High God plan is going to be fulfilled. Right? We can do that thing on purpose and see life because of it. Or we can fulfill that thing by accident and seek death. Right? He tells us that his people die from lack of what? Knowledge. That's ignorance. Right? When you lack knowledge, that's ignorance. That's just saying, I didn't know. They had no idea. They didn't know that they was fulfilling prophecy. They just thought they had put, let's put this robe on him since he think he a king. Look, he think he a king. Let's put this robe on him real quick. Here. Oh, you a king? Let me show you. Let me give you a crown. It's a crown of thorns. They had no idea at the same time. What they was really saying is, oh, yeah, this is Aaron. All right? This is the high priest. This is the mouthpiece of God. All right? This is what we're looking for. A whole book got to testify to man. Go on over there, boy. Why are you always in my darn way? Why do you feel like you can do whatever you want to do? Why don't you have a seat, boy? Grab a... Uh, where we left off? Leviticus? Yeah. Let me get uh, Leviticus 8. You know what I'm saying? Jump, jump on down to 18. This is Leviticus chapter 8, verse 18. Mm-hmm. Moses set them up, got them all dressed. What did Moses do now? And he brought the ram for the burnt offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. So who brought the Moses brought the ram? Right? Moses was bringing a ram for a burnt offering. And then after that, Aaron and his sons laid their hand on the ram. Watch this. And he killed it, and Moses sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. Uh-huh. And he cut the ram into pieces. Mm-hmm. And Moses burnt the head and the pieces and the fat. So Moses is doing all this. You see, Moses is the first one making the sacrifice. All right? We're going to learn right now that Aaron and his sons are the only ones supposed to do the sacrifices. All right? But Moses kicked that whole thing off. He ain't a son of Aaron. It's important to know that. It's important to know why. Keep going. Keep going. And he washed the inwards and the legs in water, and Moses burnt the whole ram upon the altar. Mm-hmm. It was a burnt sacrifice for a sweet savor and an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It was a burnt sacrifice for a sweet savor. It's Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 5, and we're going to go back to uh, Leviticus 8. We're going to try to finish out Leviticus 8. It's Hebrews chapter, what did I say, 5? Mm-hmm. Chapter 5, verse 1. And for every high priest takes from among men, taken from among men is ordained for men and things pertaining to God. All right, a high priest is what Aaron was. He was the first high priest. He was our very first. When we talk about history, black history even, he was our very first high priest. 
All right? The only or the first high priest of the most high God. Well, the first high priest according to the tabernacle of the most high God. All right? Let's take a look at it. Taken from among men. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, mm -hmm. that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Mm -hmm. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? Mm -hmm. For that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. Mm -hmm. And by reason hereof, he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. Uh-huh. And what, what, who, who can do this? And no man takes his honor, this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. He said the only person that can take this honor on himself is somebody that's called of God, just like Aaron. All right? Just like Aaron and his son. So he's letting you know nobody's supposed to be doing this thing other than Aaron and his sons. You got to come from Aaron's blood. Right? But Moses did it anyway because the Most High God sanctified. Who going who gonna to make Aaron sanctified? All right, the Most High God had to set it up in a way where he can get Aaron. Aaron had to be sanctified. Most High God only dealing with Moses. That means Moses, you're going to have to do it. You think it's an accident that Moses got chosen from the Levi, from the same family as uh, Aaron? No, it had to be Moses. All right? Then he had to set him up. All right? Go ahead and go back to uh, Leviticus chapter 8. This is Leviticus 8. Give me... Um, what verse we leave off? Like 20? 21. 21? Give me uh, 29 then. And Moses took the breast and waved it for a wave offering before the Lord. For of the ram of consecration it was Moses' part, as the Lord commanded Moses. And Moses took of the anointing oil and of the blood which was upon the altar and sprinkled it upon Aaron. And upon his garments, and upon his sons, and upon his sons' garments with him, and sanctified Aaron and his garments, and his sons, and his sons' garments with him. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto Aaron and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and there eat it with the bread that is in the basket of con consecrations, mm -hmm. as I commanded, saying, Aaron and his sons shall eat it. Mm -hmm. And that which remains of the flesh and of the bread shall ye burn with fire. Mm -hmm. And ye shall not go out of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation in seven days until the days of your consecration be at an end. All right, so they had to stay in there seven days. Seven days until the days of their consecration were an end. Right, and then what else? For seven days shall he consecrate you. As he hath done this day, so the Lord has commanded to do, to make an atonement for you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, ye shall, ab shall ye abide at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, day and night, seven days, and keep the charge of the Lord, that ye die not, for so I am commanded. All right, so they had to stay in the tabernacle for seven days to kick this thing out. That was part of their consecration. In other words, their cleansing or, or uh, them being made set apart, All right? So their whole ceremony, it, it lasted for seven days. They had to stay in there. They like in jail, all right? They couldn't do nothing. They had to stay in there and keep the tabernacle for seven straight days, right? Couldn't come out. Watch this. Grab, uh, grab Numbers chapter 18. It's Numbers chapter 18, verse 1. All right, they still not ready. Moses getting them ready, setting them up, making sacrifices. They got to stand there seven days. They still can't get it done. And the Lord said unto Aaron, you, Watch and, this. you and your sons and your father's house with you shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. He said, you, he said to Aaron, you, your sons, and who? And your father's house with you. Uh-huh. Shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. Okay, so that's you, your sons, and the Levites. Remember, he was a son of a Levite. All right, so his father's house will be the Levites. All right, so you, your sons, and the Levites shall do what? Bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. Well, bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. Where? What else? And you and your sons with you shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. Mm -hmm. You and your sons. You see, he didn't mention fathers out there. He said, you and your sons with you, excuse me, will bear the iniquity of what? The priesthood. The priesthood. All right, that's sacrifices. All right? That was Aaron and his sons only. Y'all can do the sacrifices. You and your father's house, y'all gonna y'all gonna bear the, the iniquity of the sanctuary. All right? Keep going. 
And your brother and also of the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, bring you with you, bring them with you, that they may be joined unto you and minister unto you, but you and your sons with you shall minister before the tabernacle of witness. All right? So your sons, y'all going to minister before the tabernacle of witness. That's what y'all going to do. You know what I'm saying? And then the Levites, the rest of the Levites, they're going to be joined unto you. But let's hear about what they do. And they shall keep your charge and the charge of all the tabernacle. You know another way of saying keep your charge? You know what that means? Obey. They're going to do what you say, boy. Right? What else? Only they shall not come near the vessels of the sanctuary and the altar that neither they nor you also die. All right? He said they shall not come near the vessels. So all that stuff that we are describing, how Moses was going in there, picking stuff up, moving stuff. He had to put the candle here. He had to put over there the breadstick. If y'all paying attention, Moses was up in there moving stuff. Right? Y'all wonder why, why Moses was like, look, everybody stand back. Let me go in here and go ahead and do it. Right? And the book said that he reared it up. And he finished the work. Right? It wasn't an accident that the Most High God set it up like that. Anybody else would have tried to go in there and help. They but would have been done. Right? The book set it up perfectly. Moses had to go in there, put things up, set it up. Right? But it's a wonder because this is, you know what this is talking about? It's saying, this saying, they better not come to Levites. Moses is a Levite. They better not come. They mess around and die. Let's see. Keep going. And they shall be joined unto you to keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation for all the service of the tabernacle. Uh-huh. And a stranger shall not come near unto you. Uh-huh. And you shall keep the charge of the sanctuary and charge of the altar, that there be no wrath any more upon the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And I behold, and I behold, I have taken your brethren, the Levites, from among the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. To you they are given as a gift to the Lord to do the service. To do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Right? So they were given as a gift. So the sons of Aaron, as a gift, were given the rest of the Levites. And they would keep their charge. So they're servants. Right? The Levites are servants to the sons of Eli. I mean, um, sons of uh, Aaron. And now what they're trying to do is they're trying to put everything together. Sons of Aaron like, yeah, go ahead and clean that up for me. Uh, go get the, the boy. There's was, was a boy out there. He had two goats. Bring him to me. I told him I, I, I'll take care of him later. Uh, yes, sir. Right? So they had to go ahead and take care of stuff. They had to keep their charge. The Most High God gave that to Aaron as a gift. Aaron and his sons as a gift. Remember, Aaron was the mouthpiece to Moses as, as he brought him out of Egypt. So the Most High God was going to have something for him. Right? He gave him an honor. He said, okay, I'm going to look out for you. Right? Why else did he do it, though? Why, why, why else? Why did the Levites get chosen? Because they redeemed themselves in the day of uh, the golden calf. In the day of the golden calf, right? Remember in uh, uh, was it, Exodus 32. Exodus 32, we are dealing with it. The, the people all, they built the golden calf. They started to worship it, right? They thought that was the most high God. Most high God just told them, don't do that. He just got done telling us not to do it, right? And they did it anyway. So when Moses came down, he just asked the question. He was like, who on God's side? The only people that stepped up was the Levites. But before that, see, this, this is the thing. This is how, this is how precise God is. Grab, uh, grab Genesis chapter 49. This is Genesis chapter 49. So if y'all remember, way back in when we was reading in Genesis, you remember we were dealing with a, a woman named Dinah. And then we learned that Simeon and Levi devised a plan after a man slept with Dinah as if she was a harlot. Dinah was Simeon and Levi's sister. Remember, Simeon and Levi, one of the, one of the twelve from Jacob, right? Sons of Israel. So Dinah was in a position where she was with a man, but he wasn't married to her. Her brothers were offended about this. Simeon and Levi came up with a plan to trick all of they people into getting circumcisions and thinking that they were going to give away Dinah to marriage. Well, after, after they got that circumcision, all they did is waited until they was all in, in pain. They went in there and they killed all of them. All right? Most High God didn't like that, and their father, Jacob, didn't like it. 
So this is what Jacob is talking about. This is uh this is uh Genesis. Just start at verse one, actually. Genesis chapter forty nine, verse one. Cause they the second and second and third son, so it ain't that far. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Uh huh. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. So look how this start. Start off with Reuben. All right, it's deeper. We're going to have to come back here one day. But it start off with Reuben. His firstborn. Firstborn, we know the way our customarily our firstborn get everything we got. Right? Customarily. We don't have to give it to our firstborn, but customarily that's how we do it. You get the biggest portion. Alright? Watch how this go. Unstable as water, you shall not excel. He said, you not gonna excel. Watch this. Because you went up unto your father's bed and defiled thou it. He went up unto my couch. Simeon and Levi, our brethren, mm -hmm. instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Look, the, the first son, he told him, you're not going to excel. In other words, you're not the one. So now I got to drop down. Next son would be Simeon. But watch what he say. Simeon and Levi, they what? Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Mm -hmm. Oh, my soul, come not thou unto their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor. Right? He said, do not give them my honor. So first son, you're not going to excel. Right? So the second, the next two son, he said, you know what? Don't even give my honor to them. Right? Keep going. Watch what else he tell them. Be not thou united. Uh-huh. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. Uh-oh. So I told you they got mad because of Dinah. After they got mad at Dinah, or mad because of Dinah, they went out there and they killed some folks. Right? What else? Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. Uh huh. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. He said, I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. This is the Most High God speaking through Israel himself. Right? Israel, or, or Jacob, he's giving a prophecy right now. He's saying, my two sons are going to be divided in me. Right? That means in the land of Israel, these people will be divided. So Simeon and Levi were prophesied to be divided in Israel, right? So that was a curse. That was something that was put on them as a negative. Then, after that, after the, the, the sons of Levi develop and they start to grow, then they come back and they stand up for the Most High God. So now that's a plus. The Most High God said, uh, grab, grab uh, Exodus chapter 30, 32. I forget exactly what he said. This is Exodus chapter 32. Give me verse 26. It's Exodus chapter 32, verse 26. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let he him said, come unto me. Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Mm hmm. And he said unto them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, uh -huh. and go out, in, go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. Most High God said, Go ahead and get him. Turn yourself against, against brother, and against friend, and against neighbor, so right? For the sake of the Most High God. So y'all did this before. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, keep going. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell on the people that day about 3,000 men. Uh-huh. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and every and upon his brother. All right, that so he, he spoke made. to the Levites. He said, Consecrate yourselves, separate yourselves. That he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. That he may bestow upon thee a blessing this day. All right? So that day he told them, you getting a blessing. So it's two things at work, right? One thing was a curse. You got to be scattered. Ain't no way to get around that. You got to, you, your butt going to have to be scattered. But at the same time, I'm going to have to try to bless you with that. So how did that end up being played out? Grab, uh, grab, uh, Numbers chapter three, verse five. This is Numbers chapter three, verse five.
the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near, and present them before Aaron the priest, that they may minister unto him. Uh -huh. And they shall keep his charge, and the charge of the whole congregation before the tabernacle of the congregation, uh -huh. to do the service of the tabernacle. Uh -huh. And they shall keep all the instruments of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the charge of the children of Israel, to do the service of the tabernacle. Uh -huh. And you shall give the Levites unto Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel. And you shall appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall wait on their priest's office, and the stranger that comes nigh shall be put to death. All right? So that's how he ended up fulfilling the curse and the blessing at the same time. He said, you know what? I'm going to scatter y'all amongst Israel because now I'm going to take y'all, and y'all going to do service for me, which means y'all going to have to split up all through Israel. And at the same time, I'm going to fix it where it's going to be a blessing for you because why? You're working for me, right? That's an honor, all right? Keep going. Watch this. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, And I behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of all of the firstborn that opens the matrix among the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Levites shall be mine, because all of the firstborn are mine. For on the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast, mine shall they be. I am the Lord. Right? So you may not remember, but back when we were working in Exodus, we saw in Exodus, we came out of Egypt. The Most High God, to get us out of Egypt, he killed all the firstborn children all, out of, all through Egypt. Right? The ones that he didn't kill were our children. He, he made a difference. He said, I'll show you this day. Is that I see a difference between Israel and Egypt. Right? So our children didn't die. But the Most High God looked at that and he said, well, since I passed over you, Right? Still, you owe me a kid. Right? I spared your children. So technically, you owe me the, your children. So he told us every firstborn child out of Israel belongs to him. So we would have to redeem our firstborn child. So we'd have for a, a child, our first son. Right? We'd take our first son, and then we'd pay a price to redeem him. Right? That was the only way the thing could be done. So now what he just told us, he said, okay, Instead, right, instead, I'll take the Levites as opposed to taking all of the firstborn, right? Because other otherwise, our firstborn will all be dedicated to the Most High God. They'd be just like Levites. So he's like, I'll take the Levites instead. So instead of y'all doing that, I'll take all the Levites. They all belong to me, right? And then that way we get to keep our firstborn. Go ahead and go to uh, Exodus chapter 13 for me. It's Exodus chapter 13, verse 11. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore unto thee and to thy fathers, and shall give it thee, thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that opens the matrix, and every firstling that comes out of the breath, out of the beast which thou hast, the male shall be the Lord's. Mm -hmm. And every firstling of a donkey thou shalt redeem with a lamb, and if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck, and all the firstborn... And all the firstborn of men among your children shall thou redeem. Mm -hmm. And it shall be when thy son asks thee in time to come, saying, "What? What is this?" Right? Your son gonna ask you. You can be like, "What is this? Why you always gotta? What is this? He gonna? What is this about? How is this, Dad? I don't understand this." He said, "It's gonna come a time when your son asks you, what is this?" Thou shalt say unto him, By strength of hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of bondage. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both firstborn of man God and firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all that opens the matrix, being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. Mm -hmm. And it shall be for a token upon thine hand, and for frontlets between thine eyes, for my strength of hand the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. Mm-hmm. For by strength of hand. Grab uh, Luke chapter 2. This is Luke chapter 2, verse 21. 
And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Yahushua. His name was called what? Yahushua. That's when Yahushua was born. He was eight days old. As soon as it was accomplished, his name was called Yahushua. What else? Which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Mm -hmm. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, mm -hmm. they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Mm -hmm. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Most high God had to do the same thing with Yahushua. How he not going to keep the law? All right? Yahushua had to be dedicated to the Most High God. Just like a Levite. Right? Most High God took the Levite instead of our firstborn. Right? Well, you don't think Yahushua had to do it? Right? He's as good as a Levite. The whole thing got to testify of him. Right? Grab uh, Leviticus chapter 12. It's Leviticus chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman has conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. All right? And in the so eighth, the mother of Yahushua, she made sure she kept this law. You see, it said that on the eighth day, right, on the eighth day, he was, it was accomplished, right? His days were accomplished. And then she called his name Yahushua. Then after that, it said that she fulfilled the days of her purification. Watch this. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. That's one law she completed. What else? And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. Right? So this is the book. Right? A lot of times we just reading this stuff. I mean, if you just reading the New Testament, you ain't, you ain't never been exposed to the law. You don't know what you would just read. All you reading is, oh, look at beautiful uh, Mother Mary. M Mary, may I? All this silly stuff that we, we just darn reading stuff. Right? We don't know that all of this connects to the law. When you start to see this stuff and see how in tune our people were with keeping the law of the Most High God, you'll see, man, it's not something that we just throw away. It's not something that we just throw in the back of a book and we just be like, oh, you know what? That's just done away with. That's crazy. You can't know God if you if you if that's your mindset. There's no way that you can know God if your mindset is let me throw away most of His word. Notice I didn't say half His word. The majority of the word is Old Testament. If you talking about throw away most of His word, there's no way you can know God. Right? Got people over here arguing about who what His name is, what they can call Him, and all that stuff. What's that? Uh, what's that? Uh. What's that song? You know that song? You know what I'm thinking of? I can't think of it right now. What's that song? Well, his name is Yah. No, not that one. Oh, man. He put his, uh, his word above his name. Uh, I forget what that one is. Right? But the book the book will clearly tell us. Right? Above all this stuff, all this name and all this stuff. Well, he put his word up there. Do y'all know his word? Do you obey his word? That's what he honors. The man is looking for somebody that'll do what the word say, and you don't even want to know it. Right? We see here fight. Everything else to talk about. I see here on Facebook and see these everything they talk about is flesh. Who they can marry. Multiple marriages. Right? Criticizing people about this. Criticizing people about that. Oh, the girl post a post. I heard that we've been circumcising wrong. Supposed to be little cartoons of what, what the real circumcision is. I'm like, everything y'all darn talk about is flesh. Y'all don't talk about nothing that got to do with the spirit. Y'all ain't got to talk, y'all don't talk about nothing to obeying the most high God through the Messiah. Everything y'all talk about is flesh and sex related. And y'all try to do it under a guise of righteousness. Ain't nothing about what y'all doing. Righteous, y'all don't know the law. Y'all never looked at the law. It be nitpicking like. And then picking stuff that's worthless. They change the Bible in one parable. They say bottles, and the other one they say wineskins. Like, 
Man, stop being silly. Yeah, but does the message change, bro? Like, does the message change at all? You know I'm being mean? darn silly. That's like translate. Yeah, like little stuff like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? You translate words multiple ways. Bottles, wine skins, like you know what he's talking about. Stop being darn silly. It's the, that's the problem with these people. They don't have the time to sit down and learn the book. It's two women that, that showed up. All right, that's two, it's two women that uh that interacted with Yahweh Shua when he showed up to their house. Yeah, Mary and you had darn Martha. Martha was busy getting stuff ready, trying to make sure everybody was fed, right? Which don't feel like a bad thing. That's a good thing, right? You're sacrificing yourself. You're trying to serve people. But Mary, her butt sat down. He, she is at Yahweh Shua feet trying to get everything he taught, right? Yahweh Shua said she was doing what was needful. Right? That has to be our mindset. Our mindset has to be let's learn first. Let's figure stuff out first before we get to moving around trying to do too much. Try to do too much, you'll, you'll fall right on your darn butt. Right? Grab a... Uh, go ahead and get up out of here. Grab uh, grab John chapter... Um, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, I think verse 40 is what I want. John chapter 8, maybe verse 41. You do the deeds of your father. Mm-hmm. Then say, then said they unto him, We be not born of fornication. Uh -huh. We have one Father, even God. Uh huh. And Yahshua said unto them, If God were your Father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Clear who these people from. I don't care what you a Christian. I don't care if you Hebrew, Israelite, Muslim, or any other religion. You are a, a, a more of the Moorish temple, Kingdom Hall, all these other different places y'all got. Man, I know, I know where y'all, y'all from y'all father the devil, right? Because if not, you would love the man. You would, you would do it the man. If you love him, what you gonna do? Do what he say. Period. You don't believe? Uh, okay, this is uh, this is uh, John chapter fifteen. Let's just talk about it. Ain't much here. To spend a whole bunch of time trying to pretend like y'all might be doing the same thing we doing. Oh, please. Y'all don't know no darn law. See here and playing around, talking about oh, our claim to fame, the law, we keep the Torah. Okay. John, what? It's John chapter 15. Give me verse uh give me verse 10. Give me verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you. Uh-huh. And that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another, uh, one another as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. Greater love has no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Mm -hmm. And ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Now, how you gonna how you gonna love God if you don't do it? How you gonna love God if you ain't his friend? And how you gonna be his friend if you don't do what he say? All right? We know who your father is. You don't love a man. We know exactly who your father is. And if you do love a man, you are gonna do what he say. You gonna line right on up with this book. There's no way, and there's no way he told you to throw something out, Christians. There ain't no way the man told you we ain't gotta get it. But in Matthew five, he told you very clearly, "I did not come to destroy the law and the prophets." Period. It's very clear, right? That's why we go back, right? That's why we read through Genesis. That's why we just finished up Exodus. That's why we we're about to be tackling Leviticus and Numbers. And after that, we're going to move on to Deuteronomy and cover all of it, do a, do a kind of summary of all that we just read again. Then we're going to move on to the history and talk about Joshua, right? We're going to talk about some of our people that were documented in Judges, right? Then we want to figure out who come after that, Ruth, right? We want to figure out Ruth, right? Then we want to figure out Samuel. We want to understand some of the stuff that was documented in the books of Samuel, then in the books of Kings, in the books of Chronicles, Right? Then we're going to talk about all our prophets. All right? After the destruction of our temple and talk about all our history. We have so much rich history. So many wise laws and wise parables. Why would we throw that away? That thing sounds crazy. I mean, you can't know God. 
He said, my people die from lack of what? Knowledge. Yeah, okay. You didn't know. Any questions? Let's pray out.